please stand by. We'll be streaming live soon. 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 Father, we thank you for this morning, a cold morning in Georgia. We thank you, God, for the opportunity of taking communion this morning with the saints. We recognize, O oh God, that this is a great hour of need in America and all over this world. Millions are mourning, millions are in prayer. Millions are locked down in their billions in their house, in their apartment. And oh God, we, we ask your mercy and your kindness to us, Lord, as we cross this time in our lives. <clears throat> Protect us from evil, God. Protect us from this virus. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And when the hour was come, he sat down in the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, I des I, I de with desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof. This is the last one. At least the, the one that Jesus, that God would recognize as a Passover until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Until the price is paid at Calvary, the resurrection, the ascension. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God has come. The same as in verse 16. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup in supper, after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, share, which is shed for you. Which is shed for you, done at the cross of Calvary. This morning, God, we submit to you that uh, our deficiencies, our inabilities, our weakness, our sins, our struggle, our voices unite together this morning and ask your God that uh, you will forgive our sins. We remember the cross of Calvary, Lord. We remember that lonely place and we take it literally and, and, and seriously as we can do to let you know, God, that we are ready, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, 
I praise you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, God. God, we pray for America. The President of the United States, Donald Trump. We pray for the Senate and the House. We ask you, God, that you put your blessings upon them and cause them to love one another. I pray for the hospitals, Lord, especially in the cities that are assailed by this virus from New York to New Orleans, from San Francisco to Washington State, all the way down to the New York City. God, and we pray for Detroit. Michigan. God, I ask you, Lord, that uh, your blessing be upon them. We pray, God, for Peru and Bishop Samuel, and we pray for Cuba and Bishop Pereira, all our staff, all those that need healing, God. In Jesus' name. And now, God, we come to take communion. <coughs> We ask you, God, to consecrate these elements that are before us. morning take this communion in your home <clears throat> take the bread and take the wine take the bread and dip it on the wine and put it in your mouth for the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus is sufficient to cover all our sins this morning we do it boldly before God in the spirit of unity and in remembrance of him who suffered and died for our sins in Jesus' name. Wipe away all tears. You mend the broken heart. You're the answer to it all. Jesus. Praise the Lord. This morning I want to continue as I was before Easter to talk about something that God put on my heart back in January. He told me to begin to look at the kingdom of God, to study the kingdom of God, and to look at it in detail. And as I did, I found that Many things that I want to remind you of this morning. First of all, Jesus came to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. He did that at the beginning of his ministry, and he did that as a risen Lord to his disciples. He came to present the kingdom of God. It's at hand now. It's at hand right now. You remember in the Lord's Prayer, after Jesus had said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What's the next thing he said? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. His kingdom to be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Right now is what he wants his kingdom to be made manifest in our lives as of this very moment. Then, John, in John chapter 17, verse 16, Jesus said this, uh, You're not of this world, just as I'm not of this world, because you're of the kingdom of God. It says that in, uh, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, it says, We are citizens of the heaven. That's where our citizenship is. And then in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, it says that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's where we are. We are in the kingdom of God now. So, the verse that God gave me when I first started following him is, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So that's what we're doing. We're coming to seek first the kingdom. When we realize that we are in the kingdom, when we realize that he, we are seated in the kingdom, we realize that we are to seek the kingdom and everything that's in it, then we don't need to be concerned, or we don't, let me put it to you this way, what goes on in the world won't affect us. Why? Because, you see, we're in the kingdom. There's no sickness in the kingdom. There's no lack in the kingdom. There's no problems in the kingdom. There's no worry in the kingdom. There's no fear. There's no anxiety in the kingdom. So if I need to learn how to live in the kingdom. That's the important thing that God put on my heart. As we are in the kingdom of God, nothing will affect us as going on in this earth today. Why? Because, you see, I'm in his kingdom, not in the world's kingdom. I may be on the earth, but I'm living in the kingdom of God. And I'm learning how to do that more and more to be able to fully participate of what God has for me. You know, I see the kingdom, but are we really partaking of what everything the kingdom of God has for us? That's what we need to learn how to do that. So if you get, uh, go to a, another country, you had to uh, learn some different things. Uh, you had to learn how to speak the language. Now, what are you going to speak in the kingdom? You're going to speak what you believe. You ever notice that when people are talking today, they speak what they believe? that <laughs> uh, they believe it so much that they're going to tell you. It may not be true, <laughs> and maybe it's a fully opinionated person, but they're going to speak what they believe. And we need to learn what's in the kingdom to speak what's in the kingdom. So what do we do that? We, we do it by faith. Faith is operating within the kingdom of God. That's the only thing that's going to allow us to take what's in the, the invisible world, so to speak, and bring it into our lives today by faith. Through the grace of God, by faith, I'm saved. Well, so he is with everything else from the kingdom of God into my life by faith. So now the problem is uh, up here. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. I got to, uh, I got to renew my mind. I got to begin to think clearly. I got to think like Jesus. Oh yeah, I got the mind of Christ. <laughs> That's what the scripture says. So I I need to begin to think like Jesus. That's what I need to educate my mind. You know, I'm educated. I got a PhD. Whoopie do. That doesn't mean anything unless I can think like Jesus. And I need to learn how to write, think like Jesus. And then when I begin to do that, I begin to see the possible. I begin to see the invisible coming into the visible world that I may be functioning in today. I need to see that. And another key element within the kingdom of God is unity. Yeah, unity. It has to be unity amongst people. 
You know, there was, there was a guy that was um, living in, uh, in heaven with Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit, you know, they're all in unity. But after this guy said, he's going to do what he wants, I'm going to have it this way, and everything, guess what? God kicked him out, uh, called the devil. Why? Because he was bringing disunity within the kingdom of God. And that's what the devil tries to do, bring disunity within the kingdom of God amongst all people. Look at the news today. Is that not disunity? Everywhere you look, everybody's rebellion, everybody's got their thing. I'm going to do it this way. I think we ought to do it this way. I think there's no unity going on. Now, there's another type of unity to, to that needs to take place in here. Spirit, mind, and body need to be operating in unity. Not as, well, the mind says this and the spirit says this, and so the body is going to go, well, maybe I'll do. <sighs> no. All of it needs to become in unity. Unity is a basic key with the kingdom of God to function, to bring forth what God wants in our lives. Hallelujah. Now, uh, another part that we learned uh, before Easter, we learned that uh, uh, we need to be, uh, be facing suffering upon the face of the earth. Uh, uh, Jesus did that? Yes, he did. <laughs> he went all the way to the cross. And guess what he said? I want you to take up your cross if you're going to follow me. Now, what's good about this suffering part, going through trials and everything, it helps me to grow. It helps me to become more mature and complete in Christ Jesus to where I become more in the kingdom of God than anything else. That's what he wants me to do. Now, can I have that uh, just like that? Uh, it's possible a miracle could take place. But that's not the way God's working in my life. I'm sure he's not working that way in you. So what I need, I need to have dedicated effort that I'm going to keep on, keeping on. I'm going to stick with God's word until I see it fully manifested in my life. That's where I want it to be. I am not going to give up on God's word no matter what my body is telling me. No matter what my mind is saying, no matter what the world's saying, I'm going to listen to what God's saying, and I'm going to hold on to that. My favorite hymn in the Methodist hymnal is Standing on the Promises. Yeah, I'm going to stand on them. I'm going to stand on them. It's the firm foundation of God's, God's promises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And everyone in this room right here is receiving that every day. <laughs> called words of encouragement. That's God's promises to us. And we need to stand on them no matter what. Hallelujah. Well, oh, that's the introduction. <laughs> uh, what we're going to cover today, won't, uh, I won't be able to have to do it the whole time. It may take two more Fridays. But it's important that we look at everything in detail because we need to understand what the kingdom of God is, how to walk in it, how to function in it, so that we can reap the benefits that God has for us in our daily life to where, like I said, nothing on the earth will affect us at all. Nothing. Because we are so much in the kingdom, the world can't affect the kingdom. The kingdom is supposed to affect the world. Hallelujah. Well, so if, uh, if you go start a country, when they came here to the United States, they started a new country, right? All right. Uh, what did they do first of all? What, 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 how did they get organized? They met together. They had a declaration of independence. They told England, said, Look, we're going to be independent. We don't need you any longer. And, and what else? A government in place? Well, what else did they develop? They had to have a constitution. Yeah, certain guidelines upon which to operate, certain guidelines upon which to function. Well, how about the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. Do you ever think the kingdom of God has a constitution as well? Yes, it does. You may not call it that, but it's there. In Matthew 5 through 7, called the Sermon on the Mount. 
<laughs> yeah, that's God's constitution. That's ha showing this is the way you function within the kingdom of God. Now, uh, you know, it, it's really great to be able to, I'm going to memorize chapters 5 through 7. Hallelujah. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I mean, you want to and you'd like to, but the effort to put into three whole chapters. So God helps us out. He gives us a summary of those five chapters right at the very beginning called the Beatitudes. Yeah, that's a summary of the Constitution, and that's what we're going to be looking at today and the next third Friday and next Friday, whatever long it takes. I, I don't want to go through it fast. I want to make sure that we get everything that God has for us. So we're looking at Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Everybody's there. I can hear it coming. Now, and seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Ah, the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Boy, that is a full, that is a fullness of God in a nutshell right there as to how we come into the kingdom, how we begin to grow in the kingdom, how we function in the kingdom. And everything and every aspect of the kingdom of God is right there in those verses. It, it is powerful. We just got to just go through it and, hey, we read the Beatitudes. Now we got it. No, we don't. We need to look at it. I'm going to look at it in detail. It's very important. First of all, we need to realize that this is telling us who God is. Yes, it is revealing the nature of God for our lives. Yeah, we're going to see that as we continue to look at it. I'm throwing this out. And as it, uh, you know, how many, I'm going to ask you this question. How many of you want to be happy? Yeah. Uh, how many of you, well, if I can, I can, you know, for me, if I can only go to the beach, I'll be happy. Hallelujah. Get over there and spend the week, and then I come back, and guess what? Uh, you know, so what? If, oh, gosh, if I could only have my sports on TV, I'm missing it. You know, I'm missing those sports, and I can't, I can't be happy without that. i got to have my sports. Oh, if I, only, if I could only go to a nice restaurant and just sit down there and just eat the meal. Oh, yeah, I can take it home, but it's just not the same thing sitting in there. I'd be happy. Yeah, if I could just go see a movie. Yeah, I'd be happy. Uh, you see, that's temporary happiness. Because you want to do something, and you back where you are again, and then you got to go do something else. God wants us to have eternal happiness. So we're looking at what true happiness is all about. Because you see, the word blessed means happy. <laughs> happy. <laughs> happy. I, I want to be happy. I want to be God's happy. Yeah. I want to be God's happiness. And everything about the kingdom of God is saying, I want to be, I, I, I want happiness for you. I want the true happiness that's eternal. You'll never, never get out of that. 
You'll always be residing in that. You're not up and down and da da da, according to what the world's doing. You in the kingdom of God, you got eternal happiness. That's where I want to be. I don't know about you. I just I want to reside there because my emotions just. <laughs> Uh, I know you don't have any emotions. You're always nice and calm and everything. No, you can ask my wife. I'm not. <laughs> Whoa, that'll tell the story right there, won't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I get irritated just, you know, if, I, if, the, if the screw won't go in right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. But I just I have great happiness, and it is the, it the total happiness that God wants me to have. So, uh, this happiness, sad to say is, if I can put it that way, it just doesn't happen overnight. It's a progressiveness in my life. It grows, and, it, and it's getting there. I'm going, like it, Scripture says, I'm going on to perfection. I'm going on. I'm, getting, I'm going towards that. I'm not going to stop and just be satisfied here. I'm going to go and go and go. So it's true happiness. So, whoa. So we'll just look at the first one here in verse 3. Uh, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Here we have a spiritual beggar. Huh? Beg, 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 and what? Well, let's look where be- blessed is. Blessed is, because I said happiness, it's the express the special joy and satisfaction granted to a person who experiences salvation. I know when I got saved, you can contain me. I mean, I was all over everybody. I was so happy. I mean, that was just unbelievable. I was just, whoo! I, I just got so out of it. I, I, didn't, I didn't even know Frank anymore. I mean... I wasn't in the world anymore. I, I was in the kingdom of God, and I was happy. That's what happens when you get uh, saved. So what is this poor? Poor is beggarly. I beg and long for Jesus and his help. Uh-huh. I am longing for Jesus. I need his help. You see, the key to the Kingdom of God is one word, humility, being humble before God, being humble before God. And I need to acknowledge that fact in my life. Let's look at a couple of scriptures about being humble. Uh, Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. Um, <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, starting with verse 9, And he spoke this parable unto a certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up unto the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with, him, with himself, God, I thank you that I am not as others are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or or even as this publican. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified. Rather, uh, rather than the other, for every one who exalts, it, exalts himself shall be abased, and he who humbles himself shall be exalted. Well, shoot, I go to church all the time. I mean, I do good things. I mean, I help out the poor, and and I, I you know, I don't I really hurt anybody, you know. Um, I kind of get along with everybody. It may not be perfect, but shoot. I mean, I'm a pretty good guy and everything. And, uh, well, uh, Jesus said, okay, if that's the way you think you are, I'm going to make sure that you get lowered here because, you see, that's not going to get you anywhere. Oh, Lord, help me. 
I forgive me of the sins I've committed against you, Lord. I have sinned against you, O Lord. And I, and I, I just ask right now for your forgiveness. Lord, I thank you that without you, I am nothing. That's the one who is humble and will be exalted unto the Lord. Isn't that what First Peter says also, Kathy? It says, Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elders. Yes, all of you subject to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time. Resist the proud. You know what? I'm, I'm one of the greatest preachers that you've ever heard. You know? <laughs> Hallelujah. I tell you, you, you just don't realize how blessed you are to hear me. And I just... You know, and I come with that, and God says, uh-huh, I got you now, Frank. <laughs> I'm going to get you. But you see, I realize that even when I'm driving here to this office, I say, it's not me, Holy Spirit, it's you. I'm not the one. You, you didn't. Get, I didn't come up with this. You did. You gave it to me, Holy Spirit. Now you present it as you would have people to hear it and receive it. You see, I realize that in me, I don't know a thing. But he, the Holy Spirit knows everything. Ah, yeah. oh, praise the Lord. So that's what God is saying. Humble yourself and you will be exalted. So that's the very first step. <laughs> that's the very first step into becoming true happiness is to confess that I need a Savior, someone who can truly help me to become what God has created me to be. You see, I can't become what I want to be I need to become what God wants me to be. And the only way to do that is I need help. Therefore, I acknowledge that fact. Then I'm on the road to true happiness in the kingdom of God. Now, I told you, it's going to take a while to get through this. And I got much more because we got plenty more blessedness. We got plenty more happiness. And it's a progressive. I want you to just meditate on that for the day. Meditate on the fact that you need to humble yourself before God and He's going to exalt you. Yeah. The only happiness that you're going to ever have is to realize that you can't do it. Yeah. Only He can in and through you. Get that fact in yeah. your mind now. You need Jesus. You need His help at every moment of the day. We need Him. So I want to pray for you that that take place. Father, I pray for you to bring us into a state of humility. Yes. Humble us, O Lord God, when we think we've been exalted. Humble us, O Lord God, when we think we got it all together. Humble us, O Lord God, when we think we are right at all times. And Father, we acknowledge today that we need a Savior, and His name is Jesus. So we come today, Father God, we, we come and, and say, oh, Lord, we need you. We need you, Lord. We need you. And I thank you for the day we receive you, Jesus, into, the, into uh, the fullness that you have for us, that we may come and partake of the kingdom of God today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Dot com for more teachings. See you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Visit www.lateran.com for more teachings. See you next time.